All right, so today we're gonna to be making it so the transmission in this thing does not boil the fluid every time I go down the highway. So I've had this in my car for a while now. You may have noticed it and you might know what it is. For those who don't know what it is, it's called an ultra gauge. It's about $100 on ultragauge.com or something like that. I don't even remember, I bought it a while ago now pretty much uh, about a week after I uh, finished building the transmission in this thing. And I got it specifically to monitor transmission fluid temperature, but it can do a lot more than just that. It can read about 47 different gauges on this car in particular. It does vary through make and model. Yes, this does work for pretty much any OBD2 vehicle. This one in particular, there's quite a lot of options, transmission temperature being one of them. And I like to read other things like instant MPG, average MPG over a certain amount of miles, and battery voltage and whatnot. So uh, basically, I got it, like I said, for the transmission temperature. And I've noticed going down the highway, uh, it gets really, really, really warm. Like borderline boiling point warm. Now that is quite normal for the third gen W body cars. GM cheaped out on the transmission coolers on this generation. And uh, as a result, we get really, really, really warm transmission fluid temperatures. The boiling point of trans fluid is 220 degrees Fahrenheit. And I've seen as high as 210 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't like that. So I got a solution for this problem. And here's my solution right here. This is a Hayden Automotive 678 transmission cooler. It is rated for 20,000 pounds GVWR and a 2,500 pound tow rating. This is plenty of cooler for a stock Grand Prix. A lot of guys will always tell you to go with the 679, which is a 40,000 pound. It's twice as long as that cooler. And that is for like a one ton truck towing all the time. Uh, yeah, you don't really need that in a sedan, especially a stock one from 20 years ago. So, this only pushes about 200 horsepower in its stock form. It's a naturally aspirated Series 3, so it's nothing crazy. And, uh, yeah, that should be plenty of cooler for it. I, I don't know why everybody always tells you to go with a 679. It's wildly overkill. Especially if you live in a state or anywhere that uh, gets really cold, such as Canada or where I'm at in Michigan. It's way too much and too low temperatures will also damage your transmission as well as too high temperatures. So going with that one, it should be plenty. It should be a nice balance in between hot and cool, even during the winter. At least I hope anyway. Should be fine. I do know a few who are running the same exact cooler and they say it works just fine when it's in line with the factory cooler slash warmer. So this project does take quite a bit of time even though it's just one simple part. You do have to take the headlights out, fog lights out, and bumper off and that alone will probably take you about two hours. It's kind of a, I won't lie, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to get this bumper off. I will need to do it again someday because I do want to get this thing fixed up it's all messed up and everything from just the years of driving and whatnot just hit 151,000, so it's uh time to get this fixed and looking better so anyways i'm going to shut up and we're going to get going on this headlights are easy just take a 10 mil that one should be fine just one bolt on each side up on this thing and that should pop right out. There we go. All right, so once you get the wheel liners pulled back a little bit, I can't get the camera in there, but right behind there, there's a bolt. It's like about right here. Uh, I think it's a 10. I don't know, 10 or 11. So I gotta get that off. I suppose you could probably reach it from this area, but it makes it way harder than it has to be. 
it already is not that fun to get to, but uh, I would recommend just pulling the wheel liner instead. Once I get the bolts off on each side, there should be five plastic clips on the top and I think six on the bottom. It's either five or six, I don't really remember. Those should be the only things holding it on after that. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Turns out when you take all the clips out, it does want to come out. Alright, so the cooler lines are on the passenger side, so I think what I'm going to do is just put the cooler pretty much. I'm thinking right there is a good spot for it. This wire won't be sitting right there, it'll be like this, but I think that's a good spot for it. I'd rather not touch the condenser with it because that can affect the air conditioning. So. Gotta think about how I want to do this. I want it down here because this is where the air gets in first. Yeah, we can figure something out. Just gotta measure from here to here. Take some flat stock and bend it like that. And that should be a good mounting system. Get enough for a light transmission cooler like that all right so here is my plan for this and that is I'm going to bolt the bottom of the cooler directly to here and then I will have a small ear coming out from this corner and it will come this way so that should be plenty to hold this thing on here it's not heavy by any stretch of the imagination uh, and that kind of maximizes airflow still getting through to it to the condenser there and to the radiator so I think that's going to work well I got one bolt in there and it's already pretty good I I cannot reach it's physically impossible to get to the other one so we're gonna just put one bolt in the bottom and then we're gonna do this ear thing and that should be more than plenty it should be fine not too worried about it. However, looking back at it now, if you're going to do this, uh, I recommend you get uh, nut certs and not try to nut and bolt the thing. Just get some nut certs and put them in the holes and then that should be more than enough to hold it on there. There we go. It's fully installed. I have the ear over here and that is pretty solid. Next we're going to install this piece. It's just a tiny little piece of brass and all it does is it converts the factory cooler return line which is right there. Turns that into a barb and then we can hook the tubing up to it, snake it around through here down to the cooler. And then the return on the auxiliary cooler will go back into this original line here which we can just flex that a little bit over to the side and that'll work. So let's get to doing that now. So it is a snap fitting. That's the term I was looking for. It's a snap fitting like what is on the transmission itself. If you watched my build video on the transmission, you might remember what those lines look like. Same exact thing up here. So. However, these are not corroded, so that's nice. Well, believe it or not, it took five seconds to get that done. I was not expecting that at all, but uh, here we are. So, anyways, that should pop out with a little bit of force. There we go. And then, so, like so. That one will pop in there. Fish that down that way. That's where it's going to need to go anyway. Just like that. 
I'd like to get some kind of solid mounting system for that, but I don't know. We'll figure that out later. And that will pop right back in there. Possibly. There we go. Here we go. It's all plumbed. I just have to get a clamp on that one. And I'm going to also pre-fill it. That way there's minimum air bubbles that go through the transmission causing it to scream and whine and do all sorts of nasty things. Uh, I think one time is enough for it. So anyways, uh, yeah, got this tiny funnel that I found in the snowmobile trailer of all places. Had to clean it out like three times, but it's uh, mostly clean now. Got it stuck into the return that goes back into, or no, that's the sending line there, what I got it plugged into. And then the return line is down there, clamped up and all nice. So, yeah, I'm just going to fill it up right up to the top. Hopefully there will be minimal air bubbles in it. There's going to probably be a little bit in the uh, return line, but it should be fine. Alright, so let's get that done. Here's the final product. I'm going to put a couple of zip ties in to keep everything secure. None of the little lines seem like they're too kinked. They have some flexibility. So I think everything is solid. And we're going to fire this thing up and kind of let it just cycle through. Get that cooler warm. And get some of the air out of the system. I know there's still air in there, so we're going to work on that now. And this transmission is direct drive, so it is pumping even though it's in neutral. So we're just going to let it sit here and warm up for a bit, I guess. I don't see any leaks, so that's a good sign. So it's been running for a bit. I put it in reverse a couple times to get some friction in the transmission and it is definitely warming up 98 degrees the fans just kicked on so it cooled down a little bit but inside it's reading about 100 degrees so and this thing is warm to the touch i can still touch it for a little bit but it's definitely getting warm so i think we have a good system i don't see any leaks it's not even dripping. So yeah, we're good. All right, the year is 3024 and I got almost everything but back together. Wanted to show you the small modification I made first though. I just cut this bottom piece out because uh, it was pinching the cooler lines a little bit and now it's not. Now they can move around freely and not get chafed. So everything seems to be bone dry surprisingly also this hiv ballast fell inside the bumper at some point i don't know when it happened it could have been like months ago but it's back up where it's supposed to be now the uh professional fix job there that might last like another two months but you know what everything is going to be perfect on this it's gonna work. So that's all that matters at the end of the day. Anyways, I will get everything else put back together, take it for a spin and see how warm it gets. All right, sorry about the glare on the screen. It's just the lens with the sun going down and everything. But anyways, been driving for about 45 minutes, varying speeds between 65 and 35 in the middle of nowhere 
smells of manure all around farm fields everything like that so yeah pretty flat roads no hills or anything but that's pretty much all of michigan anyway so anyways trans temp is staying steady at 176 the air conditioning is on you can see the coolant temperature is 195 i have a 185 thermostat in it so it's definitely fully open but uh yeah it's been sitting happy right there for a while now about 165 175 which is a lot better than 210 a lot better so actually it's starting to cool down a little bit looks like or no it just went up but uh, usually when I'm you know driving hard and everything like that I won't have the AC on usually if I'm like cannonballing somewhere so pretty much whenever I'm driving but uh, yeah that's all besides the point taking that corner a little fast but that's all right we got good tires on this thing Anyways, uh, I think that sums everything up. This thing is a lot better than it used to be. I'm very happy with 176, 166. Now that I'm just cruising, it's actually starting to cool back down again. So that's a good sign. Look at this performance. Look at that. Nice sharp curve, nothing. But uh, yeah. Anyways, I call this a success. Look at that, it's going all the way back down to 170 now. Perfect, and the AC's still running too, so that's a good sign. Yeah, don't you pull out in front of me, man. Please, thank you. Man, this car handles so good. And it's a base model too, it's not even the sports suspension. How about that? It's these uh, Toyo tires. Anyways, uh, I think that's going to be it. I'll see you later.